Good morning, I'm David. I'm Haley. We're here in the Intelligent Concrete Laboratories, ready to talk to you today. Staying Haley, socially distant. Staying socially distant. Haley, what's up for today? We're talking about the differences between ACI and ASTM. Oh, good. That's a good one. You know, Haley, there's so many organizations out there, professional organizations. There's ASC, American Society of Civil Engineers. There's ACI, the American Concrete Institute. There's ASTM International. There's in my old world, there was a USSD, United States mm -hmm. Society of Dams. ACPA, There's NRMCA. In the pavement areas. There's so many of these. And what do we think? I mean, are they all just having parties and doing the same thing? No. <laughs> I think they're probably pretty different. <laughs> Correct answer. They all got, all got good, um, good mission statements and good reasons why they exist. So, you know, back in the day when I was designing buildings all the time, you know, if I wanted to design a hotel or a foundation or a warehouse or a pumping plant or whatever, um, you know, I learned some things in school about it, but there's standards. Mm -hmm. And we've talked a lot about standards in previous videos that standards are there so we all can follow them. And so uh, we learn from others' mistakes. The standards are formed uh, based on that and other things. So as a designer then, out came ACI. ACI requirements for structural concrete. But what it should say is the requirements for structural concrete design. Mm -hmm. It's about designing things. It talks about the concrete strength, the rebar, uh, sizes of members, allowable stresses, all of those kinds of things. And so I turn into the appropriate section of 318 and I follow along through the code and I do the calculations and I designed a beam maybe in the bottom of the hotel design maybe is two feet by three feet with compression and tension mm -hmm. rebar you know in order to meet the standards and so um, so yeah this was the viable for design and then I was actually working in a concrete plant we were a design build firm at okay. that time and so so I'd call out to the plant, uh, plant manager and say, well, I need, you know, 4,000 PSI concrete. And he'd say, no problem, you know, we've got a certain mix for that. But how do you suppose he knew the 4,000? The standards. That's right. We need to go over to the ASTM standards for that. Mm -hmm. And how do we measure compressive strength out of ASTM? C39. C39. We do that every day here. Mm -hmm. Uh, we break cylinders every day here. So in ASTM, there are procedures running tests that give us the quality control for the parameters that we need. So if I need compressive strength, and it's whatever I designed for, 4,000 PSI, let's say, then at the plant, they're going to have a quality assurance program, just like we do here, mm -hmm. that uh, they run, make cylinders, and they break them with C39, and they... Um, decide what the strength is um, with C39. I know for a fact you've got a follow-up video on mm -hmm. the distribution of strength C94 ready mix concrete. So I won't get off into that right, awesome. right now. So we'll check it out. We'll shoot another one here in a bit on that. So we have material specifications here in, um, we have test procedures here mm -hmm. in ASTM and we also have materials uh, specifications here in ASTM and we the one we run here all the time is C39 no for material specifications oh 494 C494 that's oh, it. <laughs> and that's a big one yep, yes yep. it says um, if you're gonna if you're gonna have a new product you can compare the products that you like but this product might be better it has a table on how much better it has to be. Mm, wow. Ah, wow. So compression strength is a good example. Some of the, some of the criteria has to be 105% better. Wow. So if you're going to ask people to spend more, there has to be a reason for it. reason sure. for it is it's, it's better. It's better. It's 105% better. So are you willing to spend the money? Yes or no. It has criteria for um, bending, for okay. flexural strength. Mm -hmm has criteria, if, there's a lot of supplemental criteria, it has criteria for durability, it uses free stall, and there's this gigantic table um, that you have to meet as material specification. So, if I'm the designer, 
I need to know I'm using a material that's good, that's been tested, that has quality standards to it. If I'm a material producer, I have procedures and standards I have to follow to say, hey, hey designer, sure. you know, buy this from me because hey, I backed, up, yeah. I backed it up with the ASTM Bible. And then when I design a building, I can say, hey owner, you know, hire me because I'm going to follow the Bible. I'm going to design it the way it's supposed to be. So that's kind of the flyover. Okay, yeah. Uh, we have design, we have Material test procedures and materials, uh, and materials in other um, societies or professional organizations like USSD, the Society of Dams. Uh, they have all kinds of guidelines and um, things that are special to dams. They specialize okay. in that. Um, you know ACPA, they, mm -hmm. they, they specialize in things, and what do they specialize in? Concrete pavements. Concrete pavements, American Society of Concrete Pavements, so they have specialty guidelines uh, just for that. Would that be in building code? Mm -hmm. No, this is for buildings. No. So yeah, so that's why I have all these different societies. That's why I have ACI, that's why I have ASTM, and that's why I have others. Very cool. So that's kind of the flyover on uh, why we have these things. Yeah, I learned a lot. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. I did. <laughs> I hope you guys learned a lot too. Okay. All right. So I guess that's it. Yeah. So I'm David talking, I'm talking about standards. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Ding that bell for notifications. Go concrete. Be asphalt. And COVID-19. <laughs>